Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dor and today I want to talk about doormats and door slams. I feel often uh, there is a conflict between uh, whether you should help people or give to people or be nice to people or whether you should be tough with people, harsh on people or critical with people. What I feel like when you talk about INFJs and ISFJs and ENFJs and ESFJs is, you know, ha being a feeling and judging type, uh, there is a proneness, there is a tendency to towards acting like or appearing like a doormat to other people. You know, often uh, INFJs and ESFJs all tend to display kindness towards primarily people and towards groups and towards uh, uh, communities. So they tend to start out quite open to others and quite receptive to other people's needs. They focus on the group as a whole, what can I do for everyone? And they can be quite blind to their personal feelings in a situation or uh, their overall instinct about a person. But in the case, what I've found is uh, if you're feeling and judging to people, so highly agreeable and also highly flexible, it can be quite difficult to manage and say no to people. So it's a combination of these four traits being a feeling type, being a goal oriented and group oriented type and being an agreeable type and being a flexible type it's these four traits together personality wise that tend to create the doormat in the stereotypical sense or fashion and uh, having a few of these traits or some of these traits can make you more likely to be or act like a doormat towards other people so the question is what do you do how do you handle how do you say no to people First, what I recognized when I studied the Enneagram was that uh, there's essentially two different kinds of types, you know. There's the competitive types uh, that uh, seek to win, that seek to beat you in an argument, that seek to come out on top of every situation, uh, like the Enneagram A types, the Enneagram 1 types, the Enneagram 3 types, the Enneagram 4 types. Usually they're all focused on themselves and their own success and their own status and their own work. Yeah, that can make them quite blind or self-absorbed. So that can make them forget about the needs of others or of what other people want and of collaborating with other people. Other types like the nine, uh, for example, or the two, can be quite uh, receptive and agreeable. So what you see there is they tend to be very accommodating towards other people. They tend to look to what other people need. They tend to want harmony. They tend to want peace around them and peace with other people. So that makes them more likely to help other people, to look out for others, to think about others and to concern themselves with the needs of other people. So often when you're a 9 or a 2 and uh, a 9 of J and you go through these situations and you deal with these kind of people, First, what you need to recognize is how, who, who am I dealing with, you know? There's other harmony seeking types out there, there's other agreeable types out there that want to help you, that want to be nice to you, that want to support you. But there's also people out there that want to win, that want to compete with you, that want to argue with you. So you need to know who am I dealing with? Am I dealing with a person that's open to me and that wants to help me or am I dealing with a person that wants to use me? So you need to recognize these people exist and they're really, they're not bad people. They're just different. Their outlook is different. Their mindset is different. Their approach is different. And uh, what you need to recognize is you are giving to them freely. They rarely ask these things of you. You are giving it to them freely. What they are looking for is very different from what you are looking for. They're looking for a chance to test their wit and ability. They want to prove themselves. They want to beat you or want to improve or want to do something unique. So their outlook is completely different than yours. So yours, your outlook can be, how do I help others? What do I do for the community? What kind of a person do I want to be towards others? What's important to me? What are my values? Do I want to make the world a better place? That can be your outlook, you know, but their outlook can be different and that's just different. It's not wrong, it's different. So just recognize that first and foremost. You have not been abused by a narcissist. Uh, narcissists are actually quite rare, uh, but you have been dealing with a normal person with normal needs and dif different needs and different outlooks than you. So when you know this, you also have to start tuning into yourself. You know, who do I give to? And my time rule is only give to people who ask. Only give to people 
who give to you back. So look at give to people and offer your energy to people and you know dare to invest in people <laughs> because there's nothing wrong with that. Recognize that often you know with feeling and judging, you know, judging is goal oriented. So feeling and judging types, we tend to go out and approach a stranger and we tend to just help them out. No idea who they are, no idea what they want, no idea if they're good or bad people, no idea what their interests are. Uh, so we get disappointed quite a lot. We get hurt a lot and sometimes we do get used and sometimes we invest in the wrong people. So you have to constantly look at, did I get the return on this investment? Did I get something from this? Did I, this help me in any way? Did it make me feel happier? Did it make me feel more at peace? You know, if harmony is your goal, or if pride is your goal, then look for that. Did I feel proud of myself for doing this? Then that's all the reassurance I need. I don't need anything from the other person. If I it, then it doesn't matter what the other person did or what the other person did. Is the person at peace with me? Is the person happy with me? And am I happy with the person? Do we have actual harmony? Because a lot of the time there is no harmony. There is an ongoing onslaught of a person never being happy with you. You know, you can deal with those people in life that are never happy with you. No matter what you do, it's always something wrong. Uh, you didn't do enough. You didn't do it good enough. It wasn't to their expectations. It, they wanted something else. You know, there's, they wanted more, you know. You'll deal with those people that always look for conflict and that are never happy, those perfectionists. And you know, what you have to do is either you have to accept and deal with that and recognize that, yeah, this is the kind of person I'm dealing with and they're always going to want things to be the best. They're never going to be completely happy. Uh, so I have to accept that and find peace with that. What you also have to look at is feeling often uh, translates to benevolence, like active feeling, a feeling type that actively uh, tries to use their feeling function is going to be very benevolent. They're going to be either honest and trying to help people or helping trying to get the truth out. They're going to uh, want to make a difference in the lives of others or they're going to want to make the world a better place or so on and so forth. Uh, often, uh, the more feeling you are, the more benevolent you are. So you have to recognize benevolent energy, benevolent motivation. Is, uh, it's not a finite resource, uh, but it's an energy, you know. It's an energy that can go up and it can drop, and it can go up and it can drop. And sometimes you might have those bad days when you're not feeling motivated, when you're not feeling happy, when you're not feeling content. And that might affect your mindset and other people. You might be dealing with genuinely good people that are going through a rough time. Because, you know, the more stressed you are and the more difficult things are for you or for the other person, the more selfish you tend to get. The more a person is struggling, often the more selfish they tend to become. And that goes for you as well. So what can happen is you can go through a period of helping another person and then you can go through a period of stress where you start feeling uh, bad about yourself and lacking in motivation and that can also cause you to look at other people as energy thieves or somehow people that are trying to use you or that are bad in perspective. So you have to check your energy as well because this might not be accurate. They might not be these kind of people. and. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to be aware of what you're feeling in every situation. You know, your focus tends to be on long-term needs. How do I become happy? How do I make other people happy? What can I do to make things better long-term? Uh, but that can never be, that should never be the denying of short-term feelings and impulses. If you are sad in a situation or if you are upset or if you are tired, always let people know. Help people but let them know you're tired. Help people but let them know it's difficult. Help people but let them know what you need and what you want to feel good again. What you need to help them. Let them know what they need to give you for you to be able to help them. That's how you become truly collaborative, truly agreeable in a healthy, um, self-aware and self-conscious manner. So I hope this video helped you as an INFJ or as an ESFJ or as anybody who happens to be highly agreeable or highly flexible towards others. Thanks for watching and if you like this video feel free to leave a like, share and subscribe to other people that might need this message. See you all in the next video.